uh, with me, if you don't mind, I need to ask you about a couple of other uh, issues that the West, including the U.S., always uh, attack Iran with in terms of human rights. Uh, political prisoners and uh, not allowing opposition to protest and state their uh, side of the story and what follows in, uh, as torture. How do you respond to these uh, accusations? Well, political opposition, which is very common in Iran, just look to the newspapers. And the political opposition right now holds about six newspapers and every day you see articles about their views. And demonstration, they should get permission and if they can guarantee non-violence, then it is done. I mean, we, will, we have numerous cases of demonstration, legal demonstration. Demonstration could, shouldn't be illegal. They need to get the permission. This is the law. But what they say about um, pu putting the people in jail like defenders of human rights, lawyers, th things like that, you see that label does not prevent or make immune a person from illegal action. Any person, whether labeled a defender of human rights, labeled as medicine, labeled as carpenter, of any profession. Profession does not prevent that. So anybody who indulges in illegal activity is susceptible and should be accountable in front of the law. Lawyers, for example. A lawyer should spend his time defending his client, not spending his time from going from one capital to another in the European countries to make interviews. This practice is not done in anywhere in the world. Sakina Mohammadi's lawyer never spent the time to visit his client. We in the Human Rights Council are working more to find little hoes here and there to help her. But those who claim to be her lawyers, they are flying from one capital to another, making political statements. You can look and ask any legal firm in the world. No, law, no lawyer should practice such a practice. So these people engage in such subverted act. They should be subject to, uh, to law. Their excuses, though, if, if I can say, that they're not permitted to meet with their client and therefore they're seeking out the international community to defend their client in that arena. This is absolutely lie and, and, and incorrect. Even in some cases, that the lawyer should spend the time to make an appeal. They lost it. They didn't do it. And this should be pursued by law. We have numerous cases that the lawyer should spend the time and to make an appeal and go to the appeal court. They never did it. They were, they were busy making interviews in Washington and London and Paris. And there is a deadline for that. I never filed, they never filed an appeal. And then we asked the person in prison, we as Council of Human Rights, why you did not appeal? He said, I didn't know. I asked the lawyer to do it, and they didn't. I think this should be pursued by law. This is an illegal act. This is misuse of the profession of law and defense. Uh, and the legal defense. So uh, I think somebody who carries the, the, the title of lawyer should practice that. Otherwise, it doesn't matter that he carries that or not. Another issue, and I, I'm sorry to harp on these issues, but I okay. think they, they, uh, they need to be addressed directly, which is the state of the minorities uh, inside the Islamic Republic, such as the Baha'een or the Sunni minority. Many claim also in the West that uh, their situation is in dire need of uh, help, if not from the government in Iran, at least from outsiders. How do you respond to the state of the minorities within uh, the Islamic Republic? Well, there is uh, a stark difference between Baha'is and Sunni people. Sunni people are not co considered a minority in Iran. They are like any other Iranian. So they are, they are judges, they are universities, they are governmental posts. So uh, Sunnis are not considered minority at all. Baha'ism is not a religion in Iran. The Jews are minority, and they have even members in the parliament. The Christians, they are minority. They have 
a member in the parliament, Zoroastrians are minority. Baha'is are a cult. And uh, they are governed by the law which is dealing with different cults. And uh, as far as this cult is not preventing the, his follower from going out of the cult, they are tolerated. So you can find Baha'is universities, a student, as teacher. There are more than 300 uh, students, Baha'is students in our universities. There are professors. They are very affluent people. They have big factories and companies. So they are protected by law according to the law which we call it citizenship contract. Regardless of their religion, as far as it is within the structure of the law, they get all the protections. But when the trouble starts, that they start to act as a cult which is closed-door cult. It means that people can get in, but they cannot get out. And we had numerous cases. Some young Baha'is, they, they wanted to leave this cult. They said, it doesn't make sense to us. So they have been summoned in meetings, and they were being warned that if you leave this cult, you will be punished. You will be deprived from all the ancestral will. You will be put under pressure. So here the law will come in. And we will, they will, the law will prevent the use of this much exclusive or kind of dominating cult procedure. Any cult, being Baha'i or being Shia, doesn't matter. It will be prevented by law. We had numerous cases of cults practices even with Shia group. People have been jailed because they were putting people in some farms and not letting them to go out. So we will fight with any cult activity which prevents its followers from the freedom of leaving the cult. Being Shia or being Baha'i doesn't matter.